the difference between like the human lumbar and the dog lumbar and the horse lumbar are mainly in scale size, um, a little bit of, of how they rotate, um, but not much. But the biggest differences are in both ends, the pelvis, the SI joint, and the atlas, of course. You are listening to The Dr. Haley Show, the podcast dedicated to helping you optimize your health. Each episode, there will be an interview or a message to help you discover better health. We will be featuring health radicals on the show to bring new ideas to the table, as well as doubling down on key fundamentals to support you living your best life. Your host is no other than the founder of Haley Nutrition, Dr. Michael Haley. Thank you for tuning into the Dr. Haley Show podcast. I'm Dr. Michael Haley. Today's guest is Dr. Bill Ormston. He goes by Dr. O. Dr. O is a chiropractor, but not just any kind of chiropractor. In fact, trust me, you don't want to go to Dr. O for a chiropractic adjustment, unless you're an animal. All of Dr. O's patients are animals. Dr. O teaches those with licenses to practice veterinary medicine or chiropractic how to adjust animals. He's author of the book, Yes, It's Really a Thing, an informative guide to animal chiropractic. Enjoy the show. Like if you ask me to look at you, let's say you were here. I have a, I have an adjusting table. We have a drop table in our living room. And if you were here, I'd say, Doc, can you give me an adjustment? You'd say, sure. And I'd lay down on the table and you'd adjust me. And then if I ask you, Hey, do you want me to return the favor? You should say, no. Oh, come on. <laughs> Why do you say no. that? Why? I don't get it. Tell me. I don't know the correct angles. I don't know. I don't have a human protocol. Oh, I don't. Okay. I, I don't. I don't do people. Huh. I just have an animal protocol. Okay. Remember, I, I'm a, I went to a seminar and then I've continued to go to seminars and animal seminars and, and I've dissected like I said, I've got 68 spines here yeah. and I look at spines and I play with animal bones and I know they go this way and not this way. Yeah. Well, for me, it was my Pomeranian and the first yeah. time he ever jumped off the couch, he shouldn't have, it was a high couch and he clearly hurt himself. And after a couple of days, you know, I palpated and feeling the range of motion and trying to figure it out. And I, you know, found the one segment that I knew was causing it. Yep. And after, you know, motion palpation, it, 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 go, it, it moves this way from the other side, but not this direction. And the adjustment probably looked similar. It probably looked like I was wringing out a dish rag. But for me, it felt like it was very specific and accurate. And mm-hmm. he did let out a little bit of a yelp, but that was the last yelp he let out. And he'd been yelping for a couple of days since right. jumping off the couch wrong. Yeah, they hurt. And mm-hmm. and I knew it was fixed. He knew it was fixed. But I, you know, that was my first and only experience adjusting an animal. And it yeah. was my pet, so I had enough time to figure things out. Yeah. But it was yeah. definitely, you know, untrained. And I couldn't imagine being familiar with all kinds of different animal spines and being able to do that. There's very few bones that are, you know, most of the bones are different. The difference between like the human lumbar and the dog lumbar and the horse lumbar are mainly in scale size, um, a little bit of, of how they rotate, um, but not much. But the biggest differences are in both ends, the pelvis, the SI joint and the atlas, of course. And in the, in, in what subluxations happen, like the most common subluxation in the human pelvis, I'm told, is that one side drops back um, and, and kind of goes high. And they, they call it a PI, all right? And if you look at gravity, how the gravity affects the human pelvis when it's standing, it pushes down. And so it would make sense. And then our guts are above our pelvis, and so they push down on it. And so that's the most common human pelvic subluxation and they're very that subluxation in animals is very very rare and only happens in trauma Mm. because 
the guts are under the pelvis. Gravity is pushing different way right. on the pelvis of the quadruped. And so we get what's called that our animals get what's called an AS more likely than a PI. Now, if you adjust the PI side, eh, they'll get better for a short term. But if you adjust the AS side, it, it lasts longer. It's more specific. Interesting. And that's really cool. Yeah. And so things like that are, are kind of what, why we recommend that everybody take a course or find somebody yeah. that, that is certified in animal chiropractic. And there's more and more out there all the time. And there's only two states right now in the United States where chiropractors that are certified can't adjust animals legally. So it's just, it's not about, and, and like California says, any chiropractor with advanced training can adjust any patient, including a pregnant woman. Okay. So if you have advanced training in animals, then your patients are animals. And, you know, we talked a little bit about how the body does things and how, when you're going to adjust my son, it, what it's going to do. And there's a lady by the name of Heidi Havoc that wrote a book. I don't know if you've heard of Heidi Havoc or not. She's a neurosurgeon out of New Zealand. That's also a DC. And she has a book called the reality check. And it's a like download PDF. And it's, if you're not familiar with chiropractic and you're out there listening, it would be a good way to get checked. She's done a lot of research. It's, it's all published. It's peer reviewed. You know, that's all important. And she talks about white noise in the brain in how the chiropractically adjusted spine and brain handles white noise more efficiently. Now, what's white noise? Static. How about things that go on in the background? Okay. Anything that goes on in the background, not just static. Okay. Because sometimes it's awareness. it's important things that go on in gotcha. the background. Gotcha, gotcha. Like, when's the last time, Dr. Mike, you told your heart to beat? Yeah. Never. I've, every, now, every now and then I pay attention to it, though, and say, wow, it's beating. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, maybe I should breathe. <laughs> because those things. So if everybody looks at their thumb, put, take your thumb up there and count over 14 cells from the inside. Yeah. Count over 14 cells. And that cell needs to eat. So go ahead and feed it. All right. And then it kind of needs to go to the bathroom. So, okay, tell it it's okay to go to the bathroom. And then get all that out of there. All right. Now you laugh. But if we could do 10 cells a second, you think that would be doable? I to have no idea how many cells there are in our body. No, no, but just, no, just... Tell yourself, could you do 10 cells a second? Eat, drink, pee, poo. You could tell 10 cells. Maybe. That'd be if you got good at it. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. Okay. There's 32 trillion cells in your body. It would take you 32 years to tell every cell in your body to eat, drink, pee, and poop one time. That means they can only go every 32 years. And life wouldn't be so, worth living because that's what we'd be focused on. That's all we would be able to do. You and I wouldn't be able to have this conversation. We wouldn't be able to, when we get done, go unload aloe vera. We wouldn't be able to go chop more wood. We wouldn't be able to do that because we'd still be sitting here going, okay, eat, 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 eat. <laughs> yeah, you know, and when you think of it that way, it's beautiful because these things happen and we don't know how to make it happen. We're not smart enough. The only thing we can do is get the interference out of the way so that the life that is so much smarter than us can do what it's supposed to do. We, we get the interference out of the way. We give it what it needs to the best of our ability, nutrition, exercise, rest, positive mental well-being, free up the physical interference. And somehow it turns, I've used, I've said this before, it turns peanut butter and jelly into more of who I am. Yep. It takes the things that I put in this hole, <laughs> chew and swallow, and it uses those things to rebuild 
damaged tissues and repair. And when I cut myself, somehow it heals. Yeah. And the better you ingredients you put in here, the faster you heal. Well, and the more we stay here. Organic peanut and the butter better, and jelly. <laughs> yeah. Home, home, organic. Home, homemade fruit preserves. <laughs> or, organic almond butter. There you go. <laughs> With locally grown honey and some fresh fruit preserves. There you go. <laughs> On a nice gluten-free homemade. Gluten-free from fresh ground, gluten-free grains. Okay. Right. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and, and that brings up, you know, most people are feeding their dogs highly processed food. Yeah. And we know that that's one of the reasons that some of these dogs get arthritis. You know, it's kind of yeah. like what you said about, what was it, Rockefeller that was looking for something to do with the byproducts of the oil? You yeah. know, dog food is byproducts. Yep. It, it's, you know, we got to do something with this. I know we'll sell it and we'll say it's dog food. And the yeah. dogs will eat it because they got to eat something. Yep. And, and we'll make sure it's balanced because we can, you know, balance it according to a test tube. The thing of it is, is that a lot of my peers, well, my veterinary peers, when I tell them, you know, oh my God, you can't be feeding raw dog food. And I, Why not? Well, where are the studies? There was actually a study done in 1957. Uh, it's called Pottinger's Cats for anybody that wants to look it up. But he did, he had three colonies of cats. And due to some, he was a, doing tuberculosis research. And then we, that became not such a big deal. And so he had these three colonies of cats and he's feeding one raw food and one cooked food and one restaurant trash. And what they found was that within three generations, the commercial kibble cat food cats were starting to die of disease, not old age, but like diabetes and arthritis and heart disease and kidney problems and all those things within three generations. Okay, starting to have some malformations and the cats that were fed raw food were still dying of things like bite wounds because they would get in fights. Um, they would, you know, in old age, these cats would be like, you know, 27, 28 years old and dying and not, you know, dying of arthritis and heart disease. And so that study was done way back in 1957. And then we just, it kind of got buried. Now, I'm sure you guys took an oath, right? That says, first, do no harm. So if you go back and read Dr. Pottinger's study, can you, in good faith, redo that study? Well, uh, if you're not going to do any harm, but you know there's going to be some <laughs> harm done, Right. So you got to feed better ingredients to these animals. And that's one of the things we get into here with the, when we try to do the double blind studies, you know, I'll have a chicken that'll be a little bit off and I'll call up to the, to the office and I'll be like, Hey, chicken number 42 needs an adjustment. And they'll look it up and they'll go, okay, well, he's in the adjusted group. Go ahead and adjust him. So I adjust him. And then, or nope. You can't adjust him. And I'm like, well, what do I do? Yeah. You, we end up pulling him out of the study. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So, uh, so, but yeah. What, what is the difference between, well, you, if you're not adjusting people, you won't necessarily know. But uh, uh, when I adjust kids for the first time and the parents bring them in and, they're afraid of the doctor, possibly because they know that when you go to a doctor, you get, you know, holes poked in you and they do yep. all kinds of crazy things. So the kids are terrified and they go kicking and screaming and it's often a few visits even before they'll let you really adjust them. And then they start looking forward to their chiropractic adjustments. What's it like for animals? Well, it depends on the owner. 
Um, and if the owner comes in and I'd say, so Mike, you bringing your dog in. Have you ever been to the chiropractor before? Oh, hell no. I would never go to the chiropractor. They're quacks. Okay. Why'd you bring your dog here? Well, somebody told me that maybe he needed a chiropractic adjustment, but I'm, but I'm not sure if you can have fluffy or not. That dog's not going to relax very well, you know, because it's getting the owner stuff. But if somebody has no preconceived notions, if they've never been to the chiropractor before, they have no idea. Somebody said I should do a chiropractor. I don't know what it's about. I don't have any, those dogs are relaxed. And then the ones that, have you ever been to the chiropractor? Yep, I go all the time. Can't believe I'd never wanted to get, I never even heard about getting my dog adjusted before. Let's get him adjusted. Those dogs do great. Now, every once in a while, I'll have a dog that is in so much pain when he first gets adjusted that it's hard to adjust them every time. But we get them all adjusted and they all feel better. One thing that dog, most dogs do when they get adjusted is they shake. Um, that's a neurological reset. And most of them come back and say, thank you. You know, they'll, like I've had horses, sometimes horses have, you talked about the loud pop from Charlie. I've had horses that must have a huge explosion in their head and then be like, and then they'll be like, no, all right, so lay their head on your shoulder. So these are osseous adjustments. They're hearing things pop and crack. Mm -hmm. We don't always, but I think they do, you know, cause like if, like I've been adjusted and I'll be like, oh my God, that was loud. You, you feel it, but do you truly hear it? You know? You enjoying the show thus far? One of the many health secrets that we have covered on the show is all around aloe vera, specifically drinking raw aloe vera. Our aloe vera has helped our customers effectively heal their gut, increase their intestine health, lower inflammation in the body, eliminate and or decrease acid reflux, have glowing skin and hair, and so much more. Now, as a frequent member of our audience, you will be exposed to exclusive specials and coupon codes for the awesome products manufactured by Haley Nutrition. That's right, for simply being awesome and tuning in, you can get a mini discount to help you optimize and better your health. To see how we can help and support you on your health journey, Tune into the episodes and listen for coupon codes that you can use at www.haleynutrition.com before you make your orders of raw aloe vera. Once again, it's www.haleynutrition.com. Now, back to the show. And usually if we hear an audible, it's because it's been out for a long, long time. Yeah. Um, yeah, now for the person yeah, getting always... adjusted, if the closer it is to the ears, they're more going to hear it because the yeah. there's bone conduction sound will actually travel through bones and it's right there yep. close it doesn't have a long path so if you're getting your atlas adjusted it could be pretty loud inside your head yeah. the chiropractor will yep. feel it may or may not hear it yep yeah and that's kind of the way it is and then people will be like oh i don't know i don't want that snapping and popping and it's i tell people it's just like any other gas release in the body Usually, it's not harmful to anybody. Well, not necessarily any other gas release. <laughs> well, some, <laughs> sometimes, you know, it's just, you know, when you have a gas release, usually it should be not harmful, but depending on what you had to eat, maybe <laughs> it might be harmful to other people. <laughs> but, you know, like when we adjust cattle and and the hardest part is to be safe for everybody because each species of animal has their own natural reaction to pain, sudden movements, whatever. You know, like I said, when I got my rib adjusted that time when I was having that adjustment hurt, you know, and if it had been kosher, I might have reached up and slapped my chiropractor, but I knew better, you know, so dogs, they're going to bite. So we make sure somebody controls the muzzle. It's usually not, they're not going to come after you and come after you and come after you. It's usually out. And then, oh, that feels better. Horses usually want to go up when something like that happens. So you want to make sure you're not in a position as the chiropractor 
to be in the way of that horse going up and you have to make sure the handler's out of the way right. and sure it's all about safety safety first but, yeah. but each animal is is different um, and we try to you know keep the animals as comfortable as possible when i when i adjust pbr bulls i i do it i use a special tool for those because i want to keep my arms where they where they are and keep them mobile <laughs> um but we do and we know that animals that jump for a living get whiplash like dogs that jump for a living get whiplash horses that jump for a living get whiplash mm. whiplash lesions are lower neck guess what pbrs what are they bulls what do they do for a living they jump they get whiplash. They need to get those lower cervicals adjusted, which isn't, wow. you know, something that you just say, okay, turn your head, look up. <laughs> yeah. That'd have me wondering if, if I had done that for a living, why, why did I pick this profession? <laughs> That's a tough one. I'm sure it's rewarding, you know, but it's gotta be a little scary at times. Well, it is until we figure out how to do it. And then once we figure out how to do it, and that's the important part is to figure out how to do that in a safe manner for both me and the bull. Okay. Tell, tell me a little bit more about you and your business and who's your typical customer. So, well, we have two businesses, all creatures, every spine, which is our vet clinic. Um, except it's just animal chiropractic clinic is all that we do here. We have the ability to do everything. I have an ozone machine. We have cold lasers. We have PEMF. We have, I can use homeopathics. We have herbs. All that is at our disposal. But it says right on our sign-in papers, we're not going to do anything to your pet until after we adjust it three times. And then if we decide that maybe we need something else, because of the limitations of body, because you've, which usually means you've waited too long to get your dog in here or your horse or whatever, then we'll use some of those other things. But otherwise we adjust. First thing we do is check for dural torque. We use a modified deer field, you know, grab, put our hands on the tuber sacralis or pick up the legs on a small dog, turn the head to the left, turn the head to the right, if those tuber sacralis move or if those leg lengths changes, we know we have upper cervical problems. Get rid of the upper cervical problem. Get rid of the drill torque. When that's gone, then we move on. Now, for those listening, Dr. O is describing some very simple tests that chiropractors use to help figure out what's going on in them. Some big words, but it's yeah for the chiropractor, it's a very basic everyday test that we do with our patients to figure out where the problem is. And, and I get, I can do it in a giraffe. <laughs> uh, I've done it in an elephant. I do it in PBR bowls. I've done it in, you know, miniature chihuahuas. You can do drill torque. You can check drill torque with a modified, um, in any size animal. And it's pretty amazing because the dura surrounds the brain and spinal cord and it separates the, the central nervous system from the peripheral nervous system. And when the, the nerves exit, there's this thing called a dural port, like a funnel. And, and there every so often along the spinal cord. And if we have dural torque, so if we do that check and the tuber sacralis move or the sacrum moves, it means that every dural port on that side of the body is also moving. So if the legs move a quarter of an inch, all those dural ports move the quarter of an inch. In some of these dogs, we'll have an inch movement. If it moves an inch, then every one of those drill ports moved an inch. And we were talking about inflammation and pressure on the nerve earlier. How much pressure did we put on the nerve if you moved that dura a half inch? It's huge. Yeah. And then the huge difference between the quadruped or animals and us is how gravity affects us and what nerves get affected first. Right. So the nerve to the big toe in us 
is controlled by the femoral nerve. The femoral nerve runs in the front of our spinal cord. So it's right in the front. In the animal, it is in the same spot, except it's now on the bottom hmm. of the cord. And any time those five guys show up, swelling, heat, ardmore, redness, and pain, swelling always goes down. The first nerve affected is the femoral nerve, which controls the back foot. And so animals come in all the time. They bring in pictures of the pelvis and they got the most beautiful pelvis and there's nothing going on in the pelvis, but yet the dog's dragging a back leg and nobody can figure it out. And I adjust the atlas and we put the dog down and the dog walks. And how come it was so far away? Yeah. It's because of the anatomy and how, where nerves are in the spinal cord and how important knowing you know, when I went to vet school, if you'd have told me that I needed to know that kind of stuff, I'd be like, nah, give me this drug and give me that drug and cut this and do that. And it's, but now I know all that stuff and I don't even have to think about it because it's easy. Sure. So for the veterinarians out there and you hear me talking about neurology and gravity and all this stuff, it's like, oh, I don't want to, or even a chiropractor, I don't want to go back and learn nerves again the nerves that you need to know are the important ones yep, yep, yep. <laughs> like the stand-up nerves sure the the lay down nerves <laughs> huh so. you know with the therapies that you have in the office do the dogs ever you know come in looking for a specific therapy like you know where is that pmf mat i want to lay on it for half hour or <laughs> um we don't do any so we rent those um, because I, I, my time, uh, let's see, how are we going to say that? I think that every person should spend their time doing one, what they're good at and two, what they enjoy. So that if you're doing those two things, you're never going to go to work. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that's all right. And we're still going to be doing it when we're 95 years we're living old. Our because dreams. why? Yeah, we're living our dreams. Now, me using a cold laser for 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. I'm not excited about it either. I'm not excited about it. I don't know, you know, but in that 10 minute time frame that I'm treating one dog for with a cold laser, I could be adjusting too. Sure. Um, we charge probably average about a hundred dollars a dog. It depends on programs and all that kind of stuff, but a hundred dollars a dog. So I can make $200 in 20 minutes. Nobody's going to pay me $200. So if your dog needs a, a cold laser on top of the chiropractic adjustment, we're going to teach you how to use it. We're going to rent it. You're going to go home and use it. You're going to be treating your dog two or three times a day, not once a day. Yeah. Um, if we're going to use PEMF, we use the cheek oil, which treats in about a, anything in about a 10 to 20 foot area, depending on which coil you have. And yes, the dogs will lay next to the coils. So they know, they know something's happening there. That's neat. Yeah. And then homeopathic remedies will dispense those and send those home with you to use, but everything is in addition to the, the chiropractic adjustment. Um, I like to think about it like a safety pin. And, and so if you have a safety pin, it's closed. Think of the pin you use to put the diapers on the kid or maybe hold your, your dress up or you know, whatever, but it, it's a closed circuit. And, and so the call. brain goes down and back up and down and back up. And when we open it up, it, it can't, that's a restriction. And, and so I'll open that up. People are going, well, I get massages all the time. Great. I'll open it up, massage my safety pin for me. Guess what? It's still open. 
Put some needles in it. It's still open. We can cold laser it. It's still open. We can put it next to the PMF machine. Still open. We can try to use a long lever manipulation. And I've got a five inch safety pin and a long lever manipulation. You can't make it go close. The only thing that will allow that safety pin to close and restore the loop is if you do a very specific chiropractic adjustment mm -hmm. at the right spot with the correct line of drive and it will go back. Right. And it looks simple to the average person. Boom, it looks simple. And you're like, I could do that. <laughs> Why do I need to pay Dr. Mike? You know, I bring my whole family in to Dr. Mike once every two weeks and they lay down and he pushes here and he pushes there. I can do that. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. But it's not about the push. For, for it's us, about this. as the doctor, it seems like that. We've done it so much. It seems like, well, we just go right to this right spot and, and, and within seconds can go in the right line of correction at the right intensity at the right time. Yeah. But it wasn't always that way. We started off studying textbooks and putting our hands on people and eventually went to this clinic where we did our best guesses to run what we thought was correct by another physician that guided us and said, okay, you, you know, you're on it here, but you need to, you know, correct this way. And they would teach us. And the first, you know, however number of patients over a hundred in the clinic were very, very closely watched and guided. And yep. then for me in Florida, I had an internship where I was working under the direction of a, another doctor for a good period of time. And the more we saw patients, the easier it got for us. And it might look very, very easy. And I can do that. But it came with very, very specific training and a heck of a lot of repetition. A lot of repetition. So our program, Animal Chiropractic Education Source, where we teach veterinarians and chiropractors, the acronym is ACEs. To be an ACE, you have to have at least five. Okay? So every one of our students, we are the only school in the country, Animal Chiropractic School, where you are an ACE chiropractor after you come to Module 1. You will have adjusted a minimum of five animals. We keep our class sizes small. Like there's a school going right now that has 70 people in class. There's no way they can adjust that many animals in a weekend. I mean, that would be 70 times five. That's 350 animals. Even for me doing it on myself without teaching, man, that'd be three and a half, four days worth right there. Just doing nothing but adjusting with no teaching and no talking to people. So you, you know they're not adjusting. But we let everybody adjust at least five animals under direct supervision. Then they go home and do it. And we highly recommend that everybody does it. We teach chiropractors how to talk to veterinarians. And there's a guy by the name of Dr. Langford. He's a chiropractor. And he wrote a book about how to increase your referrals from medical doctors. And it was like, why do, wait a minute, we're our own profession. Why do we need referrals from veterinarians or from medical doctors or whatever? Well, he calls it the gap. And he says that there's 89% of consumers have asked their doctor about going to the chiropractor. And only 11% of the doctors have said, yeah, that's fine. Hmm. And when we think about, if you go out to the mall and you're going to, you go in with a specific intent to talk to people about getting adjusted. Every person you talk to has how many spines? <laughs> Everyone has one. One. But if you were to go to the medical office and talk to the doctors about chiropractic and how you can help their patients, you know, be on a few fewer drugs, 
be on lower quantities of the drugs they're on. Help them ease what they do. How many spines does that doctor see every day? A couple hundred probably, right? Maybe a hundred, fifty, you know, whatever, but more than one. So what he's saying is if when we talk to the gatekeepers of the spine, like the veterinarians, mm -hmm. like the medical doctors, and get them, we don't go in and say, I'm smarter than you. I know more neurology than you do. I know which you do. I have no doubt about that. The only reason that my middle boy is alive yet, he got hit by a drunk driver. No. Um, was given a 1% chance of life. And I put it on Facebook, social media. Hey, I need prayers. And you're talking about Sid and, and I mentioned DE because I've been to DE a couple times and I put it on their group. And one of the chiropractors from Connecticut said, where's the closest airport? And I'm like, well, here's where it is, but why? I mean, I don't need you to hold my hand to pray. I, I know that, you know, if you and I pray together over the internet, whatever, it's going to have the same benefit as if I come fly to you or you, okay. But prayers, not, we don't have to be in the same room. He said, no, no, I need to adjust your son's atlas. Mm. I was like, okay. I said, well, can we find somebody closer? Because you can't get here for three days. So my son was adjusted 14 times in 17 days by 14 different chiropractors. Wow that I don't even know their names of, and I don't want to know their names of, because you were talking about how it probably wasn't legal for you to adjust that dog. <laughs> um, they went into family only room and adjusted in neuro ICU without hospital rights. Wow. That's the only reason he's alive is because he got adjusted. Wow. He was given a 1% chance of life. Wow. He's still with us. And he's doing great. Wow, wow. Because of chiropractic. And I firmly believe that we must talk about chiropractic. Yeah. That's why I want to get on as many podcasts as possible and talk about chiropractic. Now, you have your own podcast, don't you? I do. Tell me about it. Yeah. It's called Animal Chiropractic Clinic Chatter. And we have a little, it starts uh, five minutes of what is animal chiropractic, where I get on my podium. <laughs> and talk about how great chiropractic is and what it is and what it isn't. I'm Dr. Haley interrupting this podcast as a thank you for listening. Here's a coupon code you can use at HaleyNutrition.com during the month of August 2024. Get 20 bucks off your entire purchase of $150 or more. Many people order two bottles of aloe vera at a time. Consider upgrading to four bottles or adding Aya Green's vegetable and fruit powder. Most people don't get enough plant nutrients. Adding a scoop of greens to your daily routine is a great way to meet that need. And when you upgrade to four bottles of aloe vera, they ship a lot better, especially during the summertime. They'll still melt quite a bit in the mail for three days, but will arrive much colder than two bottles. Or use the coupon to try some of our other products. So head over to HaleyNutrition.com and use the code Dr. Haley. That's D-R-H-A-L-E-Y, one word, no spaces, for 20 bucks off your order of 150 or more now through the end of August 2024. If you're enjoying this podcast, please give it a thumbs up or leave a review, depending on which platform you're on. Thanks again and enjoy the rest of the show. We don't treat anything. I don't treat any disease. All I do is remove nervous system interference and the, your dog does the rest. Um, and for me, when I am able to adjust a dog that then goes in and expresses its innate ability, like I had dogs on the world team, they, they go international competitions, you know? And for me, that's just like, wow. That'd be like you, like, you know, hey, I'm, I got a chance to beat Usain Bolt. Would you be my chiropractor? <laughs> You'd be like, yeah, let's go. <laughs>
right? So we got, and we have barrel racers. We have, you know, I talk about the PBR bull, you know, when these t- PBR bulls, how do I know, how do you know your bull needs adjusted when he quits bucking people off? Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That, you know, that, and it makes sense. Now, um, what, what's the format? Are, is it on iTunes? Is it on YouTube? It's Spotify. It's on like 12. You can go to allcreatures.live. Oh, okay. And then we spend the rest of the time talking to chiropractors about animal chiropractic. Um, like we're going to use some of this on our episode, but we talk about some of our students and how their lives have been changed by chiropractic. We talked like we have one student and I never know how these, just like you, you know, at the beginning of this episode, you said, I didn't think it was going to go this way. (laughs) One gal told me that she was getting ready to quit chiropractic school. But one of her dreams had always been able to be able to adjust her own horses. So she spent 15,000, which is what our course cost, and took our course so that she would learn how to adjust animals. She wasn't sure she was going to finish chiropractic school because she didn't have the money. And she didn't want her family to go into debt. And she was, you know, money, good debt, bad debt. That's a whole different conversation. But anyway, I didn't know that when she took the class. And so we interviewed her like, oh, about a year later. And she said, you know, I paid for the class in two weeks. She made $15,000 adjusting horses in two weeks. Wow. She, she went to the barn. She adjusted 10 horses at about $200 a day, $200 a head, 10, that's 2000 She did it in two weeks. She had that much redone. And then she kept adjusting horses in the morning before chiropractic school. And she actually graduated from chiropractic school debt-free because of animal chiropractic. Wow. And the benefit that she was giving to the horses and their owners, they know the difference. The yeah. owners will say things like, well, I can tell because my horse is calm. And, yeah. you know, when they're calm, that's a sign that things are good. You know, so yeah. they can definitely then, see the difference. And these, yeah, they do. some of these horses are, I would imagine in different competitions and they want every advantage possible. Well, and not only competitions, but do you have any kids? Do you have any children? I do. Yeah. How old, you, how old's your daughter? Well, I, I have a daughter that is 15, just turned 15. You know, my, just now I'm, I'm, I'm sitting behind my desk and, you know, in the lighted area and got the microphone here. My oldest son actually just walked in a little bit ago, about the time you were telling me about the one that you have that was hit by a drunk driver. And about seven oh. or eight years ago, this one was hit by a pickup truck. And definitely serious. In fact, I had just landed in the Dominican Republic for harvesting aloe vera there when I got a text message from uh, Don in the church that said, I heard about your son, you know, we're praying for him. That was how I found out something happened to my son. And I had just landed in the Dominican Republic. The next flight back was on the same plane in the morning. And of course, I got on and came right back and went to the hospital where my, you know, son was spending the next number of days. And he's doing great now. Uh, But he, yeah, I'm here in the studio and the kitchen happens to be right there. And he's working down the street and came in for lunch. (laughs) Um, So I have kids. They grew up on chiropractic. They all get chiropractic care. It's important to them. And, you know, they are truly the super healthy when it comes to, you know, among their peers in school. They have never been um, jabbed. Yeah, I'm trying to think about what I can say without getting, you know, banned on YouTube or anything. Uh, the the word that I've come up with is vactaminated. <laughs> okay, that works. Yeah, but they 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 so, are super healthy. And again, I'm not saying that that's the right thing for everybody. Everyone should make their own decisions when it comes to what yeah. kind of medications they want to use. 
whether it's a yeah, and- vaccine or, 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 or medicine or not medicine or herbs and spices or not herbs and spices or just eating healthy foods. It's up to you. Do your education. You guys decide. But for my kids, that is what I decided. And now they're old enough and, and we educate them and they can make their own choices. And if they want to get shots now, they can. They haven't. So if your daughter was to go to ride a horse, though. Oh. Would you want a horse that could feel its feet or one ah, that has a little numbness in its that's feet? That's a new perspective. So we do a 12-point safety check where the horse is standing up. We take and cross his legs, and they should come back immediately. And then we go wide, and it should come back immediately. Because if it doesn't, that's an unnatural stance for a horse. And that means he can't feel his legs. Wow. And so if your daughter is riding a horse that can't feel its legs, how safe is that for your daughter? I guess I, I, I could equate it to, well, I don't know. How, would it, how safe would it be for her to be driving a car with only, you know, one of the five lug nuts tight? Or no brakes. <laughs> or no brakes. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so you wouldn't do that. But yet we have people riding horses all the time that can't feel their feet and the horses fall and, you know, and it's not necessarily the horse's fault. It's, it's because he couldn't feel his feet. He was challenged. He was not able to adapt to changes in the environment as quickly as he should. Yeah. That's a great way of looking at it. New perspective. I like it. Hey, where's the best place for people to go to find out more about you? You already mentioned the website, which was a dot live. Yep. All, all creatures dot live. There's two websites that you can go to. Yes. Cairo. C H I R O. Yes. Cairo.com. will get them to me and they can schedule an appointment, a consultation, buy the book, um, whatever. And, or go from there. And then for chiropractors or veterinarians or even young students that are undecided in their career path, okay, go to yesaces.com, Animal Chiropractic Education Source. So yesaces.com, and that tells you all about the school. All right. And one of the interviews that I did on who is animal chiropractic was a young veterinarian, a young male veterinarian. And he had come through class and done well. And, and he was out in his own practice, animal chiropractic practice. It's called flexequine.com. Anyway, Dr. Will, and he won't mind me sharing this with you. He said, I want to thank you. And Dr. Amy, sorry, I'm not sure I can get through this one. Um, he said, I want to thank you. And Dr. Amy, he said, I was severely depressed. When I came to class, I was maybe on the verge of giving everything up because I'd always wanted to be a veterinarian and help animals. And I wasn't, the drugs just weren't doing it. And people didn't want to spend the money to do all the diagnostics that were necessary. And I was just so frustrated with my career choice. And I was severely depressed and I came to module one and was still kind of like, yeah, this is just a tool in the toolbox, you know, and I, I knew some other animal chiropractors that teach animal chiropractic as a tool in the toolbox, but we don't teach it that way. I, I hope you can tell that from the way that I talk. We believe that the adjustment is the tool. It is the first tool, the only tool. Adjust first, drug second, surgery third. In that order. And only after three adjustments. I've had hit by car dogs come in that we might adjust. Ten minutes later, adjust again. And then in a couple hours, adjust again because now they're doing better. They're able to comprehend what's going on. But anyway, Dr. Will is no longer depressed. He's loving his life, living the life that he should be living. Hallelujah. Uh, he adjusts. He adjusts three days a week, and then he's a professional rodeo announcer and sound <laughs> guy. Awesome. 
and he has time to do that and he's like not, and it's just really what he likes now to do. he's living the dream instead of dreading going to work yep yeah yeah and so he never works a day in his life right. because of animal chiropractic and so you know no matter what you're doing out there where you're at in your life you know people we get calls all the time from people how do i become an animal chiropractor well first you have to be a, a doctor either a veterinarian or a chiropractor, I would highly recommend going to chiropractic school. You know, it's the same amount of pre, but it's this a lot. It's only usually three years of professional. They compress it and you get through there quicker. And the biggest thing that I see between chiropractors and veterinarians is our paradigm, mm -hmm. you know, and when you're a principled chiropractor, you firmly believe that the universe provides as long as we stay out of its way. The universe provides abundance. The universe provides health. The universe provides whatever we need, happiness. If you're a veterinarian, you always need that next big shiny tool. You need that big toy. There's never enough. You need more drugs. You need more patients. You need more. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to clarify on that, you know, for anyone listening, we know that, you know, well, we can use something like the we could say universe and you could and be thinking, well, is that God? If it, yes. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yep. God, the um, source of all knowledge, use yes. whatever words works for your belief, your faith, your philosophy, whatever you are, but the all knowing, all powerful, all supplying, meeting our every needs, whoever is holding our life together, giving us the breath of life, the reason we are alive. And the reason your dog's a dog and not a person. There you go. <laughs> um, we mentioned a lot of resources. I'm going to make sure that below this, if you're watching it on YouTube, uh, look down below in the description. I'll have links to every resource that was mentioned on this show. If you're on the blog page, every resource will be there. If you're on iTunes, well, we don't actually have the ability to link, but I can put the URLs there. You can copy and paste them. Uh, so all the resources <laughs> are going to be there, whatever platform you're uh, absorbing this content. Dr. O, I want to thank you so much for your, uh, joining me today. I could talk to you forever. <laughs> Good stuff. We'll have to do it again sometime. Okay. Thank you. So All much. right. I hope you enjoyed that episode today on the Dr. Haley Show. Make sure to hit subscribe on whichever platform you are listening to this. If this episode made you think of someone, go ahead, take a screenshot, and share this exact episode with them. You can catch the show notes for this episode on www.drhaley.com. If you want to geek out with Dr. Michael Haley on other radical health topics, be sure to check out his YouTube channel where he posts exclusive video content. All the details are at www.drhaley.com and we can't wait to hang out with you on the next episode.